So our next project in the day in the life on the homestead is this little uh, cast iron handle that I broke. This goes to my a wood stove that I'm putting in uh, my wood shop. I'm setting up a, we have so many barns and outbuildings that I have one uh, that we weren't really using and I'm going to make that my dedicated wood shop. Keep my uh, saws and woodworking tools in there and I want to have a, it's a nice insulated area so I want to put a wood stove in there so I can work uh, in the comfort and warmth instead of out here in the cold shop. So unfortunately on my little Yo Tool stove, when I was moving it in there, I, I flipped it over and I broke this cast iron handle off. And I'll show you uh, how uh, we can repair this uh, by brazing it with an oxyacetylene torch and some brass rod. It's, uh, be, this being cast iron, you can't weld it, or you can weld it. Uh, I have welded quite a bit of cast iron uh, repairing engine blocks, motor mounts have torn out. It's a really touchy process. You need to use a stick welder and a special rod and uh, monitor your heat. It's extremely difficult to weld. Um, and so I'm not going to fool around with that. We'll just use brass. The reason why you use brass is uh, brass is perfect because it melts at a lower degree, lower temperature than the cast iron. So we'll heat this up and do a repair job on this and it'll be uh, uh, ship shape here in a minute. So I'll show you how to do that. So I've just chucked up a C-clip here, or a C-clamp, in my vise, and what I, I just need to be able to hold this very securely until I can start the brazing process. So I'll put this together. just has to hold that nice and tight. I can still see that hairline crack there. So we can uh, go ahead and get that fixed. When you're lighting your torch, be sure you always start with the red one, the uh, propane or the acetylene, not the oxygen. The brazing rod that we'll be using is actually made out of pure brass. You'll look at it, it's white. What that white is, is it's a material called flux that is uh, kind of, case, it cases the brass. The brass is on the inside and uh, that helps to, to make those bonds. So as I think I said earlier, the reason for brass is it has a very low melting temperature and the brass will melt before cast iron. So we'll heat this up until it becomes kind of a cherry red here. This is a pretty thick piece of cast iron so it'll take a little bit. And I don't have the torch very hot because no reason to get in any hurry here. You want to heat the material evenly, both pieces and from side to side, not just one side. As you can see, I can take away the torch there that it's starting to make that nice cherry red color. I want this good and hot so when we touch it with the brass that it, it flows. We're not quite there yet. Place a little on there. It'll puddle up and you can watch it just flow out. Don't heat it too much. You want it to, to melt and flow. just kind of puddles up, turns into a liquid there. Now we can turn this over jet carefully. We still have heat and do the other side.
Brazing is, is not a super strong connection, not like welding where it really gets in and penetrates the metal. But for small items like this, decorative items, like the handle of this wood stove, it's uh, just fine. And if you want, you can take and grind it or file down and paint it. You never know that it was repaired. Good nice bond there. A little bit hot. this cool down on its own, cast iron is really brittle and it, it will, can really move. So if I were to take this and to plunge it into water right now to cool it down, there's a good chance that it would re-crack. So we'll just let that come down to temperature on its own. So now that our wood stove handle has had time to cool down, now we can work this brass down. So you can use, uh, when you have contours like this, rounded areas, it's always best to use a a round file or a rat tail file and there's also uh, files that are as you can see flat on one side and have a contour on the others those work good too for heavier work but for the small thing a rat tail, rat tail medium file will work good and we don't we want to be careful and not work too much of that material off because we want to leave enough there for it to hold the pieces together but we just want to knock off all of the all of the high spots there. Now, if this were a decorative piece, something more than a just a handle for a a wood shop stove, I would file this down, and then I can see there's a couple small voids, and then I would reheat this and reapply brass there and fill those in. And just like an auto body uh, guy would do, continue to fill that up until it's perfect. Now your files, files will fill up with material, especially the brass. So it, the tool to, that you want to have with your files is called a file card, and it's a really stiff bristle brush right here. And you use that to clean the shavings out of your files and they'll cut much better. And remember most files are meant to cut pushing forward not back. So if you see someone just going back and forth like that that's not ideal and it's kinda hard on the file so to properly use a file you should push hard on the cut and lift up because it cuts on the forward stroke. So here's the finished product, project or product of our wood stove handle. You can see the brass in there, laid in there nice and thick and polished down, hand filed down, and that will uh, last long, long time, long as I don't uh, smash it into something like I did last time. You know, I just want to encourage you guys when you're doing projects, whatever it is, you know, the Bible tells us whatever you find your hand to do. Whatever your, find, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. And do all things to the glory of God. Uh, don't be that guy that says, good enough for government work. Or don't be that guy that says, oh, I can't see it from my house. When you're referring to work that you're doing. Be the guy that can um, do something. Whether it's building a lean-to shed in the backyard or planting a garden or cleaning. Wh whatever it is. Whatever your project is, do it to the best of your ability. Because it is a direct reflection on yourself and on your character and is just a better way to live. So 
let's go put this on and I'll give you a quick tour of the wood shop, what we've got so far, and that should be it for this video. Oh, one quick tool tip also. When you make the, when you're buying larger screwdrivers, like your big regular screwdrivers or your number three Phillips, uh, be sure to look for one thing. Look for screwdrivers that have a hex, kind of a hex uh, pattern right here by the handle. Because what that allows you to do is to be able to put a wrench on it. This is not so important on the smaller screws because usually you can get enough grip strength on the grip uh, to, to break free the smaller screws. But on the bigger ones, uh, you'll strip them out or you just won't have the strength to turn it. So having this ability to, to put that in there and then this, using this as a lever to, to tighten or, or to loosen screws is just invaluable. So, so look for those on your larger screwdrivers. The stove was so heavy when I brought it in here, I tipped it over and broke that little handle off. I could get a new one, but you know, that requires going in, driving three hours, four hours of driving and there's no need. So here's where that a screwdriver with the ability to put a wrench on it come in really nice. You can really cinch those down. There we go. Good as new. So one of today's projects is going to be uh, my neighbor brought over his trailer. He's got a hoist on here that uh, whoever originally built this didn't uh, didn't weld the support here good enough, so we're going to reinforce that right now. So we got the base here to the lift and we're, uh, I'm tacking that or welding that onto the frame of the trailer as you can see here. What's happening is when he's lifting this up, this whole thing's flexing and it's going to come loose on him. Here we got a gap that's too big. That's too big to run a weld across. You can see they started there in the corner. So we got a piece of mild steel rod here. We'll lay that in there, use that to fill that gap and then I'll weld this in on both sides and should secure it. So the next project on the list here is Mrs. Wrangler Star's weed trimmer. Uh, pulled it out and it wouldn't start last time I tried to use it. And two stroke, two, two stroke engines, their mixed gas engines are actually really simple. So there's, d diagnosing the problem, why they won't start is usually pretty simple. Most times it's, uh, the first thing is going to be bad gas. Either you left bad gas, old gas in it. So always when you're storing your two stroke tools, or your four stroke as far as that concerns, when you're done using them, run them dry. Run them out of gas completely and store them dry rather than leaving the, the bad gas that we have now nowadays. If that doesn't fix it, it's simply going to be the spark plug. So either uh, take out the spark plug, check it, or just replace it. If that's not it, then you've got to start looking, uh, what's the problem? Is it, not get, is it getting, not getting gas or not getting spark? Those are the two problems. So once you verify that it's getting fuel, and usually you can tell because you'll smell it or you can pull start it a few times, remove the spark plug and the spark plug is all wet and oily, you have a pretty good idea that uh, you're getting fuel. So I start looking at spark. So that leaves two things. I know that the spark plug is good. I know I'm getting fuel. So it's either the kill switch has gone bad or it's the coil which produces the spark. So next thing I do is I pull out the coil 
and I eliminate the switch and, and directly hook these two with alligator clips, then try it. If it still doesn't start, then I'm looking at a coil problem. So that's what I've eliminated, or what I have uh, whittled this thing down to. So I went to the steel dealership and got a new coil. And I'm afraid they gave me the wrong one. So this is the second time they've given me the wrong one. So this project will be for another day. All right, well, we'll move on to the next one. Elves in the basement, and I went ahead and did the space shelving based upon, I went ahead and measured the different things that we use and things that you could stack or not stack. So 